Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's start. Uh, today, the plan for today is as follows. So at first, we are going to uh, go over the first chapter very quickly because uh, in the first chapter, um, we are going to learn some basic knowledge about computer. Okay, uh, this is, is some very basic review for students who are not familiar with computer. And uh, we are go I'm going to explain something about the first project you're going to work on, which is the Lab Zero. So the materials for Lab Zero is available on Canvas. OK, it is very simple. So basically uh, in Lab Zero, so uh, uh, we would like to get familiar with uh, how to use Microsoft uh, Visual Studio C Sharp. That's it. OK, get very familiar and how to create a project. When you finish your work, how to uh, zip all your work and submit on Canvas. That's all okay, for Lab Zero. So it may only take five to ten minutes for it to finish. The due date is tomorrow. OK, due date is tomorrow. So now let's start. Uh, oh, by the way, let me uh, mention uh, several things before we start the lecture. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is uh, uh, for some students, uh, when you try to install Visual Studio on, um, let me see, on, uh, on your laptop, so if you are using a Windows uh, system, so it is straightforward. You just download and install the community version. Remember, you need to install the community version, okay, 2017, because why? I, uh, I emphasize this. It is because if you do not have any coding experience before, you may want to follow the textbook line by line, picture by picture. So in this case, so installing Visual Studio 2017 will be very helpful. Why? Because uh, the textbook is based on that version. It means you will see exactly the same interface on the textbook. You will follow exact same interface uh, on your laptop. Okay, that is uh, why uh, I emphasize uh, emphasize this. That is the first thing. And uh, if you use a Mac, so uh, things will become a little bit different. Why? Because you can see there is a Mac version, right? Visual Studio on the uh, Microsoft on the website. But if you are not familiar with computer programming, installing that version is not recommended. Why? Because uh, the interface is quite different. It is very different from the pictures you will see uh, on the textbook. In, in other words, it will be difficult for you to follow the textbook to learn how to uh, uh, program in Visual uh, C Sharp. OK, so in this case, you may want to use um, uh, the apps.application application gateway. OK, apps.usf.edu that uh, uh, on the server, you can use uh, the Visual Studio Windows version. OK, that can also uh, be very useful. So we will go go over those uh, technical details later. So uh, before we uh, move on to the lab zero and actual computer programming, let's go over chapter one quickly. OK, quickly. So uh, chapter one is uh, introduction to computers and uh, programming. Uh, we have a bunch of different topics. I will go over these things very quickly. So and first, what is a program? So is a program is a set of instructions that a computer follows to perform a task. OK, basically uh, you will write a bunch of lines, uh, a few lines of uh, codes. We call it statements. And the combination of these statements can perform a task. For example, if you are a data scientist in a company. Uh, your manager asks you to uh, 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 summarize some information from some data set. So in this case, you have to write some code. We call it statements, OK? You need to write some statements, and the statements can give you, can summarize or align the information from the data set, OK? That is a program. So programmers or software developers create software 
So there are people with training and skills necessary to design, create, and test programs. It means that if you have learned multiple different courses in computer programming, and you have a lot of experience in computer programming, you can be a software engineer, okay? Software, software engineer. So in this course and this book, so we are going to introduce fundamental programming concepts using C Sharp. So some students may ask, why we learn C Sharp in this course? Why not other languages? So it is because uh, based on local demand. So we are in Tampa area. So based on our knowledge, local companies, so they prefer to students who have some uh, previous code experience with C Sharp because with C Sharp, you can build a nice interface. You can write some code. They prefer to those students. So why, that's why we pick C Sharp, okay? That is uh, mm, uh, the language we are going to use in this course. So hardware and software. Hardware refers to all physical devices, like a computer consists of many pieces of hardware that all work together. Each piece of hardware does its own work. For example, if you have a monitor, you have a CPU, you have your memory, you have a hard drive, you have a keyboard, you have a mouse. These things are all hardware, okay? You need these things to work with a computer. So CPU is a central processing unit, is the part that actually runs programs. So when you purchase a new computer or laptop, right, you will always see that the setup for CPU, it is i7 or i5, right? So these are the central processing unit, okay? For example, if you, you are writing some code, the computer will use CPU to run the code. Okay, that is a central processing unit. The second part is the main memory. It is a computer's work area. So where the computer loads instructions of programs and the data for process. You see, while you're running a Windows, right? Sometimes you feel your computer is slow. When you check your memory, you see that the memory is occupied 100%. Why it is like this? Because you have, uh, you are running a lot of different applications. So each application has to be run in the memory. It means that it will occupy some space in your memory. When you are running a lot of applications, so the memory, for example, you have 8 GB or 16 GB, all the memory will be gone with all these different applications. So this is a uh, main memory, okay, main memory. So we also have secondary storage device. So that is devices that can hold data for long periods of time, even when the power is off. That is very important. So let's see what is memory. So when you're working with different applications, for example, you open the word, right? You're working on the report of a project. So the application Microsoft Word is running and the application is in the memory. Okay, it is in the memory. However, when you shut off the computer, everything in the memory is gone. It means that you cannot save the data in the memory. You need some other places to put your data, right? For example, I start my computer for the second time. My data are still there. In this case, you need secondary storage device. For example, you have hard drive, you have flash drive, right? This is secondary storage device. So we also have input devices. So the input devices are used to input data from you or from other places. For example, when you type on the keyboard, right? So keyboard is an input. The computer can read that we're typing letter A letter S, letter D, okay, that input devices. When you are use the mouse, that is also another type of uh, input device, okay? These are input devices. We also have output devices. For example, your monitor is one type of output devices. Your speaker is some output devices and the printer is output devices. Why? Because so the content inside the computer will be output, right? to some devices and you you and other users can read those outputs. Okay, that is, those are output devices. 
The next concept is uh, software. So for software, so we can categorize into like system software and application software. For example, if you are running Windows, right? Windows is system software. If you are using Microsoft Word, this is application software. Okay, application software. So the next talk is how computers store data. So, so actually these concepts, in these concepts, okay, if we want to go over all the details, we can spend one semester, okay? But, uh, this is which is not the, um, the, the key topic of uh, this course. So we are going to spend uh, like 30 minutes to 40 minutes on this, this kind of topics, basic reductions to uh, uh, computers and the program. So how computers store data? All data stored in a computer is converted to sequence of zeros and ones. For example, you type, right? We type, I type a name in Word, which is uh, ISM3232, which is a meaningful name to us. However, a computer cannot recognize these names. So we have to transform all the data to sequence of zeros and ones. We call it a bit of binary. So the computer's memory is divided into tiny storage locations called bytes. OK, we have eight bits make a byte. Combinations of bits, zeros and ones are used to represent characters. For example, the character A is 65 in this ask to code, which is converted to binary format 1000001. OK. You do not need to understand how we transform 65 to this. It is a binary transformation, OK? So you just need to understand. Computer can only understand this kind of code, OK? Zero one code. When you press A, 100001 will be stored in computer's memory, OK? Computer's memory. So in other words, so the concept you need to understand is so for us, we type meaningful words, for example, ISM3232, but for computers, the computer can only understand sequences of zero and ones, okay? So for each input, the computer have to transform meaningful words to sequences of zero and ones, okay? That is the key concept you need to understand. So digital data, digital refers to anything that can only have two possible values, okay? Digital data is the data that is stored in binary, zero one sequences. Digital devices are devices that work with binary data. Computers are digital devices, okay? Digital devices. So the next concept is how a program works. So how a program works. So CPU will read instructions written in machine language, language called instruction set. A program will be copied into memory for CPU to execute. CPU uses the fetch decode execute cycle for processing. Fetch is reads instructions from memory, decode, decodes the instructions that were just read to determine how to perform operations, execute, actually performs the operations. So for this process, basically, CPU get instructions from memory, then CPU decode the instructions, then execute, okay, then execute. So in these days, for example, in this course, you do not need to learn this transformation process, okay, transformation process. But when I was, I first, when I was a student, okay, in my second year, we actually had a course learning this transformation, okay, learning this trans transformation. So for advanced programming language like, like Visual C Sharp, you don't need to learn this part, okay? You just need to understand CPU will get instructions from the memory. Memory is like 8 GB or 16 GB memory in your computer. Then CPU will decode the instructions. Uh, finally, CPU will execute the instructions. Okay, this is how a program works. So for programming languages, so machine languages is sequences of zeros and ones. So assembly languages use short words known as 
mnemonics to write program. So high level languages, more human readable languages that allow programmers to create programs without knowing how CPU works. So this is the language uh, C sharp, okay? So we are learning high level languages, for example, in the future. Let's assume you are going to take a course in uh, Python for data analytics. So Python is a high level language, okay? This which is not machine languages or assembly languages, okay? High level languages, okay? So keywords, operators, and syntax. So high level languages use keywords that have special meaning and cannot be used for any purpose other than to write programs. So for example, in uh, the C sharp you're going to see, we have a word like uh, private or public. So these words are reserved in C sharp. It means that you can you you cannot use these words for your purpose. You have to use the words which which uh, have follow the meaning in C sharp. Okay. So these are reserved keywords. Operators are keywords that represent special program functions such, such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So in C sharp, we also you can also use plus minus multiplication sign to do addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So syntax is a set of rules that must be strictly followed to write computer understandable instructions. Syntax error is a mistake or violation of these rules, okay? For example, in most advanced programming uh, languages, so in the end of each statement, we have to use a semicolon. So no matter you use C++, you use <coughs> Visual C Sharp, use MATLAB, you use um, R, okay? You have to have a semicolon in the end of uh, uh, each uh, statement, in the end of each statement. So this is syntax rules. So each instruction in a program is called a statement, okay, called a statement, okay? So compilers and interpre in, uh, interpreters. A compiler translates a high level language program to a separate machine program for CPU to read and execute. So interpreter reads, translates, and executes the instructions of a high level language program. So in this case, we, uh, we are programmers, we write meaningful statements. For example, I have a variable, which is number of students, right? This variable will be used to indicate the number of students registering this ISM 3232. You see, number of students, right? That uh, definition, that word is meaningful to us, but computers cannot understand this word. So that is why we have a compiler, right? So the compiler or interpreter can translate meaningful words to us to zero one machine languages to CPU. OK, that's why you need a compiler. OK, compiler. So in C sharp, right, when you finish the writing, you will build it. You say build the application. This process will compile the code we write in Visual C sharp, so Visual C sharp. So for you, you just need to understand. So in advanced programming language, we have something which can translate what we write in the C sharp to something that CPU can understand. Okay, CPU can understand. So the next concept is graphical user interface, which will be one of the key concepts we are going to focus in this course. So what is graphical interface? So we have two types of interface. The first one is command line interface, okay, which is this black window. Okay, you see that basically in this window, you're going to type command in the window. So which is old system and which is very, not very easy for new students, right, to learn the, uh, the techniques. The second type is graphical user interface. 
which is the windows we are using. You see, we have graphics, we have pictures, right? So for these systems, it is much easier for users, okay? In this course, we are going to develop some graphical user interface, a graphical user interface. So the next one, it is objects. So most programming languages use object-oriented programming in which a program component is called an object. So if you have heard something about computer programming, so this is one term frequently occurring in most languages, which is objective-oriented programming. So program objects have properties and methods like properties data stored in an object, methods the operations an object can perform. For example, you see, this is a very simple graphical interface, which is which calculator, right? So you have a input area, number of hours worked. You have a second input area, which is hourly pay rate, right? Basically for a user. The user has to input first number of hours worked. Secondly, hourly pay rate, there are two input areas. So you see that we have some indicator what number of hours worked. We have a input area in C sharp. Well, this is, we call it is text box, the text box control, text box. These are controls. We also have two buttons, calculate, gross pay, and exit. We have two different buttons. So in this form, right, in this very simple application, there are multiple different objects, right? This full application is a form object. Okay, it is a form object. These two labels, number of hours worked, these four words, Hourly pay rate, three words. These two are label objects, okay, label objects. The two input areas, the two black text boxes are text box objects. The two buttons are button objects. You may be curious, right? You may be curious why we need objects because it is convenient, right? You see, so in different applications, you may want to use buttons for multiple times, right? Multiple times. In this case, you do not want to write the code, detailed code for button from scratch each time you want to use a button. You do want to use some template. For example, I put a button here and I can name the button and I can write some code for the button. It means there is a blueprint, there is a template. At the same time, you have some flexibility, right? Flexibility to write the code. So a template or the blueprint are the objects. It means that these are already, these are set up, right? In C Sharp, you can use those set up and you can build your code from the flexibility. So these are objects, okay, these are objects. So we also have controls. Objects, controls are one, some types of objects, objects that are visible in a program, GUI, GUI, we call it GUI, it is computer uh, graphical interface, okay? So uh, computer graphical interface uh, are known as controls. So co it is commonly used, controls are labels, buttons, and text boxes. So we are going to use these controls in almost all the projects you're going to work on. So they enhance the functionality of your programs. So there are some invisible objects in GUI such as timer, timers, and open file dialog. So we will not use this in too much. So in this course, most of the time, we are going to focus on objects that are visible in a program. So they are controls, okay? So a class is code that describes a particular type of object. For example, a form class, okay? You will see we have a form class, okay? So it is a particular type of uh, object, or object. So the .NET framework. The .NET framework is a collection of classes and other codes that can be used to create programs for Windows operating system. 
you can see that's why you can see uh, it is for Windows. C Sharp is a language supported by the .NET framework. So controls are defined by specialized classes provided by the .NET framework. You can also write your own class to perform a special task. OK, this is the framework uh, supported, su supporting C Sharp. OK, C Sharp. So the program development process, OK, this is a process. So you need to follow when you are a software engineer. So there are six phases. First one, understand the program's purpose. What's the objective? Second one, design the GUI, graphical user interface, OK? Third one, design the program's logic. So what is the logic? What is the logic flow of the algorithm? Then write the code, correct syntax errors, test the program and correct logic errors, OK? Logic errors. So in this course, you need to follow these different steps. But the most challenging part is design the logic and write the code in these two different steps, OK? These two different steps. So you may need to work to correct syntax errors and correct logic errors after you finish the coding part. But these two are the most challenging part, OK? So uh, for this uh, for this course, OK, we have six different uh, phases, six different phases. So in practice, OK, in practice, the first step is also very important. Why? Because when you work on a project, the project will be very large, OK? If you work on a computer programming project in practice, sometimes you need to write thousands of lines of statements. So in this case, it is very important to understand the purpose of the program. Otherwise, you may fall in the trap, which is you, you have uh, built multiple lines of a lot of lines of statements, but the program crashes, right? Crashes. So in this case, you have to go back to the beginning and work from the scratch. That's why it is important to understand the program's purpose if you are working on a, a programming project in practice. OK, practice. So in this course, because for all labs and assignments. So we are working on the uh, graphical interface. In this case, you also need to design the GUI, graphical user interface. So try to design the logic. So what's the logic of your program? OK, so in this course, that part is not very challenging. OK, now this is not very challenging because we are not asking you to write too many lines of statements or to write a very complicated algorithm because we understand for a lot of students, this is the, your, the first course for you, right, to learn computer programming. So we understand that. So we will not try to make this part too complicated. So actually, in uh, all labs and assignments, the logic part is not very difficult, OK? Then you need to write the code, correct the syntax errors, test the logic errors. So when you work on a practical project, for example, in data analytics, so the last part is also very challenging because you are working on a complicated advanced algorithm. So try to fix all the logic errors. That part is very, very challenging. OK, these are six different steps for you to you need to learn these steps uh, in this course okay, in this course. So algorithm, pseudocode and flowchart. An algorithm is a set of well-defined logical steps that must be taken to perform a task. OK, that is an algorithm. So for example, let me give you an example about algorithm. For example, you are, you are analyzing the customer data in a company, right? You try to classify customers into different groups, right? You want to see what is the most important customers. So what my what are the customers with a lot of potential? So which uh, what which customers are uh, are regular customers? So which customers are just uh, random customers? Which uh, uh, is not the core? Right? It's not your core customers, right? You want to divide all customers into different groups. Okay, you have some data. So in this case, 
you need to design a clustering algorithm, right? To cluster all the customers in different groups. So the clustering algorithm is an algorithm. So you, which means you need to write a lot of different statements by following a well-defined logical right flows, right? Logical steps to perform a task. It means that by following these well-defined logical steps, eventually each customer will be clustered in one group. Either this customer is uh, one of the core customers or a customer with a lot of potential. Okay, this is an example about an algorithm. So an algorithm that is written out in plain English is called pseudocode. So pseudocode is something between a very subjective description and a very detailed computer programming code. So a pseudocode is to write the flow of the algorithm in a coding format, but the coding is in plain English. So this pseudocode format can help us to connect our objective and the coding, uh, the actual coding program algorithm. Okay. So the next concept is a flowchart. So a flowchart is a diagram that graphically depicts the steps of an algorithm. So when you, for example, in the in the future, like let's assume some of you will take a, a graduate degree in data analytics. You may want to do that in the future, okay? You will learn a lot of algorithms, okay? In the company, for example, you are, let's assume after graduation, you are working as a software engineer in Google, okay? So you need to build some new algorithm based on your knowledge. So the first step is to understand the requirement of the algorithm. After you understand, right, the detailed requirement of the algorithm, you may want to build a flowchart, which is a picture, a graph. But so the graph is uh, represents a flow of the algorithm, and you have a flowchart. Okay, this is very useful for professional uh, software developers to develop new algorithms. Flowchart. Okay, here we have three concepts an algorithm, a pseudocode, and a flowchart, or a flowchart. So getting started with Visual Studio uh, environment, okay, Visual Studio environment. So let's go there, okay? You see that this is, uh, this is my Visual Studio, okay? I install 2019 because I'm familiar with that. So for students who you are not familiar with the uh, what the uh, computer programming, okay? So if it's the first time for you to to program uh, in C sharp, right? You can use apps.usf.edu, okay? Let me show you again. So last time we learned how to use that. You go there, right? apps.usf.edu, which is USF application gateway. And you sign in, okay? You sign in here. So you log in. So for all of us, we are in Forest uh, domain, and you type your net ID. Then you uh, log in, okay? Log in. So this is the uh, interface you are going to see when you log in in uh, uh, the application gateway, okay? You click apps, okay? You click apps. So you have all apps, okay? I click all apps. These are all the uh, apps which are available on the server. You can use any of them. So in this course, we are going to use Visual Studio, uh, v Microsoft Visual Studio 2017, okay, 2017. If you do not have a uh, Windows laptop, you may want to use it, use it. Okay, I click uh, Microsoft. Visual Studio 2017, 2017. So this is how we start Visual Studio. Okay, Visual Studio. Okay, let's see. So it's starting and you can see, so it started, right? 
So this is the interface you will see, you are going to see on the textbook, okay? You see, so the version I'm using, it is 2019, right? 2019, which is very different. So very different from 2017, okay, 2017. So if you already have some previous coding experience, either version is fine, to be honest. They are very similar. The only difference is the interface. However, if you are new for in computer programming, you may want to follow the textbook, all the slides, right? The, uh, the pictures on the slides, the pictures on the textbook. So exactly, in this case, you want to use Visual Studio 2017, 2017, okay? So this is the uh, interface, interface, okay, interface. So let's go back to the slides, okay? So in Visual Studio environment, we have design window, solution explorer window, property window. What are what are those things? Okay, what are those things? So let me use this, right? Let me use this. It's too small for me, but I can use that. Uh, let me use a bigger one, too small, okay? So first one is to create a new project, okay, new project. So you want to do, you do want to pick C sharp, okay? Let me see, let me use this one. This is similar as textbook. New, I create a new project, okay, new project. You see, right? So you need to have Visual C sharp here, right? You have, in Visual C sharp, you have a bunch of different applications, right? You have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven different options to create. We want to create a new uh, project, okay, new project. So remember, let me emphasize, remember, in this course, right, in this course, you have to create what you have to create the Windows Form application. That is the first thing I want to uh, emphasize. Okay, I want to emphasize. Let me see how to. Uh, okay, this will be the first thing you want to uh, to know, which is. You need, in, for all the projects we are going to uh, do in this project, in this course. So we, we, we will only use Windows Form application. Windows Form application, that is the first thing I want to emphasize, okay? So the second thing I would like to emphasize is, remember, I'm using what? I'm using apps.usf.edu, right? For some of you, this will be the way you are going to use Visual C Sharp, right? So if you use Windows, you can and you have Visual Studio installed on your laptop, you can ignore that. However, if you are using uh, the apps.usf.edu, this is very important. You see, right? Let me go over here. The name of the project is the default name is Windows Form App One. You can you can uh, make a different name, okay, for Lab Zero. You can follow the, uh, the 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 tutorial to provide the name. But the key theme is the location, right? Location. You see. So when I create, sorry, I have to very small. So I location is C Drive, user, right? This is a name of the account source. Repos, right? Repos. So you see this. This is C drive. However, let me emphasize for multiple times. This C drive is not the C drive on your laptop. Emphasize again. This C drive is not your, the C drive on your laptop, it, which means, for example, if I click OK, right? If I click OK in this step, this project will be saved on the C drive. The C drive is on the server. It is not the C drive on your laptop. This is the C drive on the server. I have to emphasize it for multiple times because it is very, very, very important, okay? For example, if I click OK, for now, your project will be saved on the C drive on the server, it means you will lose all your work for sure because the server will not 
keep the files. When you save your project on the server, you cannot get it out. You cannot get it back. It is gone. OK, it is gone. It means when you finish, you cannot find your work. You have to start from the from zero from the scratch. OK. So let me repeat what you need, what you need to be careful. Now I'm using apps.usf.edu. The application Visual Studio, uh, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 is installed on the server. So you can use that, no problem. However, when you create the C Sharp, you pick Visual C Sharp, we are, go only to, we are going to use Windows Form application for the whole semester. Do not pick other options, okay? In previous semesters, there were several students who picked the wrong type. When they created their project, so they had a completely different interface and application. They were confused. The reason was picking the wrong type. We are going to work with Windows Form application. That's the first thing. The second thing is for apps.usf.edu, the location part, the C drive, the default path C drive is on the server. It is not on your laptop. It is on the server. OK, it is on the server. So in this case, you have to change. You have to change. So if you click browse, if you click browse, OK, you will see. So this is the. Right, you will see this is the. Uh, let me see. OK, this is the. Uh, the path, right? The this C drive and D drive. So this C drive and D drive are C drive and D drives on the server. Don't pick these two drives, okay? But here you have some other drives, okay? We have. I'm a faculty. I have some uh, P drives, O drives, right? But for you, you will have your S drive here, okay? You have your S drive here. You need to select your S drive. OK, you need to select S drive. In this case, your code will be saved on your S drive. When you finish your work, you can get the code back. You can revise your work. You can submit your work, OK? If you put your project on the C drive, which is the path here, right? Path here, C drive, you will lose all your work. This is very, very important. OK, I keep emphasizing this because I my expectation is so no students will make this mistake. No students will make me this mistake because if you do this, you lose all your work for sure. OK, you lose all your work for sure. OK. So let me. Uh, uh, so I can uh, let me see. Uh, however, if you have the Visual Studio installed on your local laptop, for example, I have installed Visual Studio 2019 on my uh, uh, laptop, right? So in this case, I can create, right? You can create. So we create a Windows Form application, right? Windows Form application. So we'll click Next. You see location. In this case, if I location C drive, if you have Visual Studio installed on your local laptop, right? You are running Visual Studio on your laptop. This C drive is your C drive, which means it is OK to save on this C drive. When you finish, you go to this path and you can find your work, OK? Be careful when you use apps.usf.edu. So make sure the path you save is your S drive. If you have Visual Studio installed on your laptop, you're running Visual Studio from your laptop, right? So this is your C drive. Saving here, it is OK. okay it is OK, OK? You see, I have emphasized this for multiple times because I want to make sure every single student will not make this mistake because if you make that mistake, it means all your work is gone. You cannot get it back, OK? You cannot get it back. 
So this is the other thing I want to emphasize. OK, I want to emphasize. So let's go back. We have design windows, solution explorer windows, and the property windows. OK, property windows. So when we create, let me use this, this one, right? Let me use this one. Let me see if I can change. Uh, I want to save on my private, right? Private. Drive, OK. Can I do that? Private drive. It's too small for me. Okay, let me use the bigger one. Okay, this is too small for me. Let me use this one. Okay, so you want to click, uh, click create. So this is because I have already installed Visual Studio on my laptop. So this is my C drive. So it's okay to create create. Otherwise, you go to your S drive. So here I create the project. Okay, I create the project. So you see it will take a few seconds. Then you have this interface, right? This interface will be the same as almost the same, right? As the one you, you, you see in the textbook or in the lecture slides. You see this is the designer window. What is that? It is. So you would like to write code here also. For this form CS, if I want to review designer. Yes. Designer, right? Okay, so this is the area in which you are working with the uh, let me see. You are working with your code, okay? Right, you says they all I can also create a form here, the same, right? So you need to change the path okay, because I just show you. So let me uh, create it from here. Right, you see, we have something similar as a textbook, right? I, this is the one which is exactly the same as a textbook. The one I'm using is for 2019, which is very, very similar, right? So this is design window in which this is a form, right? This is a form you are working with. You can see the slides, okay? You can put different controls on the form. So in this lecture for lab zero, you do not need to put anything on the form. It is empty because we are learning the concept. OK, that's design window. You will put controls to design the interface. You will write the code in this window. Next one is Solution Explorer, which is right. This one, right? It, it will show all the files, useful files in this project. OK, in this project, OK? So in this uh, uh, course, we are if we work with form application. If you click form one.cs, right, right click it. OK, you right click it. You will see we have view code, view designer. Designer is this form interface. If you click view code, right, so you can see. So you see the code here, right? This is a code and this is the design interface, OK, interface. And the next one is property window. So in this window, you will work with the properties of different different applications. So what are the properties? Let's use example we just learned, for example. Uh, this one, right? This example, which calculator? So you have a button, calculate gross pay. How to change the word to calculate gross pay? You will change it in this window. OK, property window. You change the text property of the of the button. So you change it to calculate gross pay. OK, three different windows, three different windows. I just show you design windows, this one. So solution explorer, the, the top right one and. 
uh, property window, the bottom left one, okay? So these are three different windows. So all to height allows a window to display only as a tab of the edges. So you can keep that, don't need to change it, okay? You can keep the default setup. So ma uh, manual bar and standard toolbar, okay? If you see this one, we have a manual bar here, which is similar as, for example, Word or PowerPoint you have used, right? So in this case, you need to save, right? Save, this is the thing we want to use. And this is run, okay? When you want to test your application, you can click here to run, okay? For a complicated project, we want to use debug. We will learn it later, okay? We'll learn it later. Uh, so the toolbox, or the toolbox, let me use this one. Toolbox is, you can see here, you have several things to click. If I click toolbox, right? So we have this interface, right? Interface. So which is the toolbox. So you see in this toolbox, you have a bunch of different uh, options. If you do all windows form, right? You have all controls here, right? In this course, we are going to use a toolbox and these controls to design the interface, okay? to, to design the interface, okay? You will practice this technique in all the labs and assignments. In the first lab zero, you don't need to put any control on the form, okay? Do, you do not need to put any control on the form. So this is a toolbox, okay? Toolbox, you see I have all the controls. Two tips, okay? You have also have two tips, which means a uh, two tip is a small box that pop ups when you hover the mouse pointers over item on the toolbar or toolbox. You see, if I put the mouse here, put it over there, right? So the uh, pop up small window give you some hint. What is that uh, control? What is that control? Okay, what is that control? So these functions uh, are very similar as a Word or Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, right? You have used. Docked and floating windows. When a window such as Solution Explorer is docked, it is attached to one of the edges of the Visual Studio environment. When a window is floating, you can click and drag it around the screen. Right click a Windows type uh, title bar and select float or dock to change the between them. So you don't need to change the setup. I feel, first I feel this setup is very convenient. You just keep the default setup. So design window here, right? Solution Explorer there and property window on the bottom, bottom right, okay? Keep toolbox on the left side. That's very convenient, okay, that's very convenient. Projects and solutions, each Visual Studio application you will create is a project. A project contains several files. Typically, the uh, forms1.cs, program.cs, etc. A solution is a container that can hold one or more Visual Studio projects. You see, in this project, right, in this project, so I have forms1.cs, program.cs, all for all useful files are organized in Solution Explorer, or in Solution Explorer. So specifying the project name, this is where you create a project, right? So change the name for lab zero. So you need to follow a very simple tutorial. Follow the name mentioned in the tutorial, okay? Well, so de uh, define the name of the project, location, right? Location. So still emphasize for another time, if you're running Visual Studio from the application gateway, right? So change the path to your S drive. Otherwise, if you're running a Visual Studio application from a laptop, right? C drive is fine. It is your local C drive, it's a local C drive, okay? So display the designer. Sometimes when you open an existing project, the project's form, will not be automatically displayed in the designer, okay? In this case, you should right-click forms1.cs in the Solution Explorer, click View Designer in the pop-up menu. For example, this one, right? If you see if I, uh, if I uh, uh, close, right, forms1.cs, so I don't have the graphical interface, I want to check my, graphical design interface, I right click forms1.cs, I pick view designer, right? You can see 
the interface is here again. OK, this is how if you want to work with the code, right? Just right click, then select view code, right? Then you work on the code, OK? So, so these are pretty much, right, the uh, materials for uh, uh, the first lecture, OK? So before we move to lab zero, any question? Question? No? Okay. Professor? Uh huh. There are some questions in the chat. Sure. What's the question? Um, I didn't ask them, I they're just in the chat. Oh, yeah, let me see. Uh, what's the question? OK, a uh, good one. Let, let me see. OK, I will check the questions. So, yeah, it's a little bit small. Let me see. So for lab zero, it's on canvas. If you check your module, there's a lab module. You will see all the information of lab zero. If you uh, uh, go to your canvas, OK, you can find the lab zero. Question one, turning assignment. Are we just uh, no? I will I will explain that later. OK, how to turn. I'm not uh, I'm not there yet. OK, I will explain that later how to turn in uh, assignment. So this one I was dropped from class based from missing first slide. Do I need to notify you of anything? So if I register uh, from the class, it's OK, OK? From uh, the office, it's OK. I don't, uh, you, you will not need to notify me anything, OK? This is a question. So if you have no other question, let's move on to, uh, uh, to the lab zero. OK, lab zero, OK? So uh, what is lab zero? So you see that if you go to modules, OK, modules, OK. Uh, you have course per point, right? You also have course labs, OK, course labs, OK. We have lab zero, zero, this, which is to, which is the material uh, requirement of the lab zero. Tutorial one, two, and turn in lab zero. Okay, three things here. Let's open lab zero. What's lab zero? Okay. Very simple. Uh, finish tutorial one point two. Okay. I understand some of you may not have the textbook for now. So let's go back to. I have posted tutorial one two right to on cameras. Okay. You can open the tutorial. You see, this is a tutorial, which basically you need tutorial one, two, starting a new visual C sharp, C -sharp projects. OK, I will not read the details of these several pages because it's very simple. OK, but I will explain the key steps, key things you need to take, be, pay attention to the key steps. OK, key steps in this tutorial. You just need to start a new visual c sharp project right you see i have created right i have created a new visual c sharp c sharp project right Visual c sharp project give c sharp projects okay uh something wrong with my uh projects okay so uh, I have shown you right how to create a new different new projects, new projects. So uh, you just need to uh, start. OK, start. Let me summarize. OK, key step, right? Key step. Step one, start, right? OK, 17. No matter you have installed on your laptop, or you have you, you want to run it from uh, application gateway, okay? Application gateway. So in the second step, right? Sorry. In the second step, so you need to. Uh, how can I put all? Let me see. In the second step, you need to. Uh, let me see. Can I put everything in one chat?
in the second step, right? You need to. Step number one. Step number two, you need to uh, uh, create a new project. OK, so create a new project. So step number 2.A, uh, rename, right? Rename the project, OK? Rename the project. You need to see what's the name mentioned in the tutorial. And next step, sorry, is uh, change the location of the project, right? If you are using apps.usf.eu, that is very important. Make sure that it is on your S drive if you are using apps.usf.edu, okay? That is a second step. Third step is submit, right? Submit your project. Uh, submit the whole project. Uh, okay, submit the whole project on Canvas, not a single file. Okay, so these are the three. Let me uh, can I delete this one? No, please. It's okay. So step number one. So have Visual Studio uh, 2017 installed or run it from application gateway. Step number two, create a new project. OK, rename the project, change the location. Step number three, submit the whole project on cameras. OK, these are three different steps. OK, three different steps. So we have gone through step number one and step number two. Now we want to learn how to do step number three, right? This is the this is a question. So this is the question mentioned on the chat, right? On the chat, OK, on the chat. So students have question how you can submit, right? How you can submit. Uh, let me see, where is my location? Uh, user source, OK, I know that I can have. Uh, user source right repos uh you can see this is a project i just created right windows form app, app one you need to change the name by following tutorial one two okay tutorial number two so this is a project the question is how to submit this project okay how to submit the project in the chat you ask right you ask so when turning on your assignment are we just attached the dot sln file or are we attaching something else so the answer is if you are you just attach the sl file then you get zero why because so you are submitting a incomplete project okay we cannot open the project we cannot grade your project okay what you need to do is to submit the whole folder this whole folder this whole folder need to be submitted, right? Need to be submitted on cameras, okay, on cameras. So how to submit it, right? You need to right click, right click, right? So if you have 7-zip, right? Or other zip, one zip files installed on your uh, laptop Windows version, you can go to zip file and add compressor, add to archive, okay? Add to archive, okay? to Windows form app.zip, right? Dot .zip. So this is one option if you have 7-zip installed. So if you don't have it, you, uh, let me see, you send, you, you click send to, right? Send to compressed folder, okay? You pick compressed folder. In, in this case, I assume we do not have any uh, zip application installed on the laptop. So you send to, Okay, I click send to compressed zip folder. Sorry. Okay, compressed zip folder. Uh, so this file is not good. Uh, 
can put it at a different location, okay? Because uh, put it here. Okay. Oh yeah, I know what's going on there. Okay, so in this case, I need to close the project first. Okay, I have to uh, close the project. Then go to here, right? I go to send to. You see, right? When I send it, I do this. So I have Windows form up one zip, right? What you need to submit is this zip file. OK, it this zip file. OK, if you are running Mac. OK, and so at first you need to go to S drive. OK, the instructions how you access S drive is posted on the slides we presented on Monday. OK, you follow the steps and you access S drive. You do the same thing, right? You compress, you right click, you compress the whole folder, not one file, two files, multiple files. You need to compress the whole folder, okay? You compress the whole folder, and on Canvas, you need to submit this zip file, compressed file, not any file inside this folder. Okay, let me emphasize the game. We will not submit any single file or multiple files in this folder. Instead, you need to compress it first. OK, send to compressed folder. And make sure that the zip file is good. It is not damaged. You see, I have some size, right? 249 KB here. And if make sure that it can be opened. You can see if I uh, double click it, so it can be open, right? Which means it's good. OK, it's good. So compress the zip file, then submit the zip file to on cameras. OK, you see for let me see for lab zero. OK, if I go to home. OK. So let me see, go to. This one, right? If you want to submit it, you see this is turning lab zero, right? You click it, right? OK. So you submit assignment, right? You submit assignment, choose file, OK? You need to pick sources, repos. This zipped file, OK? You pick this zipped file and open submit, not any file in this folder, OK? This is how we submit the project. In the future, the procedure will be the same. For example, for lab one, lab two, lab three, or assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, for any project, when you finish your work, you want to submit your work, you first compress the whole project folder, have a good zip file, try to see if it can be opened, right? Then you need to submit this zipped file, okay? This is how we submit a uh, project on canvas on canvas okay uh i think we have a file right we have a file uh, to submit uh, let me see we have a file uh to uh, how to zip and unzip the, the the project on canvas let me see if you have it okay uh if You see, right? Zip and unzipping a Visual Studio project, right? You see, we have a follow this instruction to learn how to zip Visual Studio projects, okay? So if you can practice this for multiple times, zipping and unzipping a Visual C Sharp project, okay? Uh, lab zero is not a question. It's a tutorial. You just follow tutorial. You create an empty project, rename it, Basically, the keys I have summarized the key steps here. Start with your studio, create an empty project. You don't, you do not need to do anything, just empty project. But you need to rename the project, change the path or location of the project, right? Save the project in a good place, zip it and submit it. How do you get the Windows Form extension? What do you mean by Windows Form 1 extension? I don't get your question. Okay. 
Uh, you can see something instead typing. Sorry. It was you. It you was can like ask a question. question. So the I don't design. understand what's Windows Form One extension the, uh, in the chat um, question. The designer, the designer thing that you were using to code during your tutorial. How how would you get that when you first installed 2017? I run I from. The same question I well. run. I run from 20. Uh, I'm running on my uh, laptop. I'm running 2019, but I'm running 2016 from the server. You see, this is 2017. Okay. If yeah, you're running means, from the server, you can run in 2017. Yeah, and the solution thing, uh, when I open 2017, it's not there. The thing all the way to your right, and that's what I was wondering. How would you get that? Uh, if you, it's not there, right? You can do right. like um, uh, Windows, okay? Windows, and you can try to see. Uh, let me see. Uh, view right you can see you can click solution explorer right view right when you click it, it's there okay okay thank you okay yeah another question so this is good why because uh what about workload uh you should, uh, yeah uh what do you mean by workload I press the La Cruz. What my workload? Should I don't oh, no no? Just install the the the, the, the Visual Studio uh, with default, okay? Without any without adding any work additional workload, no. Okay. So uh, if you have any other question, you can you can send me email. I will try to respond to you quickly, okay? For lab zero, it is to be honest, it's very simple. I just want to make sure that you practice, you practice how to create a project, how to uh, save the project in a safe place, and how to submit the project. Okay, we all the assignment will be uploaded until we get the textbook. Uh, no, the the assignment uh, you will have instruction for all the assignments. Okay, only the first one. Only the lab zero is based on the textbook. For all the other labs and assignments, you will have a detailed tutorial. Okay? Only lab zero. I borrow a tutorial from the textbook. For all the other tutorials, you have detailed um, uh, instructions. Okay, instructions. Any other question? Uh, professor, uh, mm -hmm. I downloaded the the program, but I just realized that it's the version 2019. Uh, is it's it fine. still good to go? It, oh. But if you're not familiar, you you may be better to use 2017. Okay, uh -huh. because in the textbook, right, you will see. Uh, let me show you. You will see pictures like this. Okay, L these pictures on the textbook. These pictures are based on 2017. In 2019, there are some there is some difference. If you're not you're very new in programming, it may make you be confused. Mm -hmm. But if you have some code experience, you will ignore that. That is this is my comment. OK, OK. And when we go to create, we need to select Windows Forms applications, right? We are going to use Windows Form application only in this course okay. for all labs, all assignments. We only use Windows Form applications. Okay, because when asking me to create, it appears Windows Forms app uh, .NET framework and Windows no, Windows Form, Form application, not .NET frame. You, you you use 2019, right? Yes. Uh, you see that? Let me create again, right? You can see create a new project, right? We will see sharp, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we have Visual C Sharp, so you have uh, you see Windows Form app. That's just this one, yeah. Windows Form app. That's yeah. Oh, okay. So .NET Core, right? Yeah, but I but I recommend you to if it seems you're not very familiar, right? Switch uh -huh. 2017 if you want. It may be easier for you. That's my 
uh, uh, my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Because okay. if if you are you have already have some previous code experience, it's fine. The difference is very small. Okay. But for some students, because this is the first coding class for you, right? It may be easier to follow the same exact same graph interface, right? Pictures, it's be really easier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question. Uh, I see that Visual Studio has a version to download for Mac, so you can use it if you have you have code experience. But the interface will be <laughs> even more different if you want to follow the textbook. That's that's my comment. That's why uh, usually I do not recommend to students who are new uh, to computer programming. The functionality is the same. To be honest, no problem to work with that. But the interface, okay, the menu interface are very different, which will uh, which may you may be confused about that. This is my comment. Okay, another question. Okay, if you have no question, right? So start work on lab zero, okay, after this lecture. The due date is tomorrow midnight, 11.59 p.m., okay? Try to make sure that you have finished all the work. You submit your work on Canvas by the due date, okay? Also, if you have any question, contact the TA or me, okay? I will try to respond to you as soon as possible, but sometimes I may not be able to check your email frequently because I don't know why I cannot check my email on my phone. It, it is uh, uh, they ban my phone. I, I have no idea why and it's not solved. I can only check an email when I log in with my computer, but I have uh, told the TA that he will try to respond your problem, your question as soon as possible. OK, as soon as possible. If you have not got any response from the TA in 24 hours, OK, try to contact me. OK, I will respond and contact the TA, OK? So the theme is, this semester is a special semester. I understand learning technical things is not easy, especially so most of you have to follow the uh, remote learning uh, mode. So in this case, so we try to be more responsive. We try to help you online, OK? This is, uh, so contact us no matter what kind of question you have, OK? That is the first, last thing I want to mention is, so I for the for all the students who have registered the face to face section, so I got response from most of you. So it seems for most of you, some of you want face to face, some of you want hybrid, some of you prefer online, but may go to face to face occasionally. Okay, it's a, yeah, all kinds of different answers based on the policy. Right, you see we have uh, this course is uh, around fifty percent. Okay, fifty percent. Online, fifty percent um, uh, face to face. So I will divide all the students who have registered face to face section into two groups, okay, equal groups. So each group will attend the lecture face to face in one week. In the next week, the other group will be able to attend the face to face section. In the next week, right? It's a uh, iteration, right? One group this week, another group next week, okay? So I will send you a notification which group you are assigned in. And uh, you can attend, start to follow schedule from the next week. Because we have a very small classroom, we cannot take too many students. We are only accommodate several students, OK? That's why we have to divide the group, uh, all students into two groups, OK? Starting from next week, so I will cover face mask, OK? I will cover a lot of things because that's policy required and sitting in the classroom, OK? Sitting in the classroom. For most of you who have registered online section, you attend the lecture via Microsoft Team. For face-to-face -face section students, you can either go to face-to-face -face section if that week is for your group to attend face-to-face -face section, or you have the option to stay online, OK? Clear? OK. So you'll be assigned, you'll be uh, assigned to different groups starting from next week. Group number one will attend face to face lecture. Uh, uh, face to face lecture. Uh, group number two will stay online. So after next week, group number two will attend face to face section. Group number one will stay online. Okay, this is 
and uh, iteration uh, uh, schedule. OK. Any other question before we finish? Yeah, I had one question. Um, sure. I have the 2017 version. Uh, sure. and when I go to the Visual C to where it says Windows form application, it mm -hmm. also says .NET framework. Mm -hmm. And I saw your said .NET core. Does that matter? And it is it doesn't matter. Yet. That's why that that is why. So interface is a little bit different. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Professor, I had a question about sure. this as well. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit louder. Can be a bit Sh louder. Sure. Um. Yeah. So I downloaded the 2017 version as well, but for some reason, when I go to create the new project. The solution for the Windows um, .NET core or framework is not coming up for me. Is there something I would need to install additionally? No, no. You, by default, you should be able, be able to there. Maybe you need to select C Sharp, for example. Oh, I, I thought it was default as well, but I think default doesn't include the C Sharp. Uh, that my my buddy was helping me out with that, but it didn't include the C Sharp at first for me. Anyways. Oh, you need to uh, select C Sharp first, okay? Mm -hmm. New project, right? Right. Pick C -sharp, C click C sharp first, okay? You will have multiple options there. For me, the options are not coming up. That was what I was asking. You mean C sharp is not there? It's just showing blank solution. Uh, so what's a what's the solution uh, for the students just mentioned? Um. When I when I first try to download it, the uh -huh. um like the what you said the the default wasn't really uh, like none of them were selected, uh, but I did select the the C sharp uh, and then downloaded that afterwards because I had the same situation. Okay, I see. You just uh, I thought uh, I see. Maybe I think previously we don't check, select uh, change anything. The, the C sharp is included. If the C sharp is not included, make sure it's included. That's it. Okay, that's only required. Okay. If you cannot have that option ready, it means that uh, they may have changed it a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just need to uh, select C sharp and install C sharp. That's it. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. No problem. For the textbook. Okay. If you go to Virtual Source, you can uh, get online textbook. Okay. Virtual Source. That's online textbook. Okay. It's like this. Okay. It's like. Uh, let me show you. Uh, vital Source. Sorry. Vital Source. Okay. Sorry. Why source? Okay, you go to this one. Vital source. You can get online version of the textbook. Okay. This website. If you want a hard work, hard copy, you can purchase from Amazon. Okay. No problem. 